Hi, beautiful family. Today I'm making a very quick little garden bed because I really want to have some plants in the ground. So I'm blessed to have some really yummy soil here and I've just gathered a nice bit of wood. This is a bit of a gully that collects water. So this might not be a long-term garden, but it will definitely feed me and my daughter through autumn and winter. So I've just gotten a nice thick log at the bottom and I've been gathering um, the grass that's on top and I've just been bringing it down, down to the log. So just the top layer, just gently bringing that down and then shoving it, shoving it in to this little gap here. So making a, an, just a little swale. So obviously this is a garden that my daughter and I will weed every day. And I just want to plant some simple little veggies. Little veggies in here. And so once I've done that part, then I'm just digging up, digging up this beautiful soil in here and loosening it and I'm actually making quite a drop from the grass line and I'm going to bring it over this way so we're covering up all of the roots of the grass spreading it out but leaving leaving this kind of moat on this side lots of reasons firstly we can create a nice water system in the moat so that the water channels through and it doesn't wash away the garden and it can slow feed um, also to stop the, the grass growing in. Like keeping a little mound on top, but I'm also just leveling, leveling it all out. Trying to keep this gully on the side. And it's so like a, a dragon's body. And as I've been going, I've found beautiful treats, lots of rocks and wood so that it's all perfectly created a border around and also really aware of all of the wild beautiful medicines around. The first thing I plant is this beautiful lavender, it's a blue lavender. So you usually plant this at your front door. Now I'm gonna at the base of the dragon, I'm going to say that this is the front door to our home and at the front of the dragon's head, I'm going to say that that's where the, uh, the gate is. So I'll have uh, lavender up this end and I'll have rosemary up the other end completing um, each, end of the, each end of the garden. So, so simple. I mean, I'm very blessed um, to be digging into incredible soil. And this is actually um, a biodegradable in a cardboard. So I'm actually just going to plant, plant the whole thing because it will break down and give, give the plant some yummy food. And I am going to leave the little names in there. And the ones that I don't have names for, I will be adding later. This is a pineapple. We had a pineapple yesterday and yesterday I chopped it off and I peeled back the layers. You can see the little nodes in there. Magical little nodes. So I usually let it dry for a couple of days. This seems dry enough. Now these take three to four years uh, to give you any fruit. And they're just beautiful. So, and you know that 
they shoot a stem out and then the stem flowers and then it turns into a pineapple. So this gets quite, quite big. I put this on the edge and so it can grow out that way. Because one of the reasons why I like to keep a lot of the native weeds and I was actually thinking of putting some of the, the devil's figs and the spiky stuff along this side is to deter the native um, wildlife from playing in the garden. But I also like to plant enough so that there's some for everybody. So here I'm going to spread these around. I have some beautiful little snow peas and some dwarf beans. These are both climbers or drapers. So I'm actually going to plant these along the edge and I'm going to sticks, find some sticks that come up and have lots of arms off them, branches off them so that they can climb up those. And if not, they can fall down the sides. like to pat them down too firmly. It's firm enough that they feel grounded and happy. Collect the pots for later. And the moon is in four, divided into four weeks. So the first week, the second week, third week, fourth week, first week is the new moon, so it's the most fertile time, um, and it's growing. The moon is, is growing. So in the first week, you want to plant your things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, dill, celery, uh, mescaline, parsley, rocket, silver beet, watercress, dandelion, basil, anything that grows above ground, that's leafy greens, and the whole point is to eat eat the greens. I've also got um, chamomile, nasturtium, and calendula. I'm going to plant a few seeds of those today. So, um, And then in your second week, you plant more things that you want the, um, the fruit from. So, uh, like your bush beans, your snow peas, your sugar snaps, all your different peas, your zucchinis, your corns, anything where it grows a fruit and you harvest harvest and then in your third week when the moon starts um, waning so it starts getting smaller you start to plant your um, more root vegetables so as the moon is waning the energy goes back inwards like within yourself so I've got today I'm going to be planting beetroots carrots leeks onions shallots so they're the main um, foods that I'm planting and I'm also going to sprinkle a few, um, probably just two of each, chamomile, nasturtiums and calendulas, just to see how they go at this time. And, um, and then I'll plant more of them in the first week. And the last week of the moon, you don't plant. That's the time where you nourish your gardens, so you, have, you pull out any weeds, you tend to things that need... Um, nurturing that don't have to do with planting, sowing, or yeah, harvesting, anything like that. So, obviously, all of the plants that I'm planting, you can harvest them as you, as you, as they grow. So you know that little rosemary can take a little bit. Mm. Gives me the medicine that I need right now. So I'm just gonna lay out where I want the seeds, and then I'll take you over. So the baby carrots up here. The shallots here will have leeks and the spindle curve here and beetroot in these curves here and then bunching onions down the front here. So just gonna put those in, show you how simple. We're gonna put the baby carrots in first. Now a trick with baby carrots, which I'll show you, is to put something over the top um, when they're germinating to keep them super warm. So help them germinate faster. You can use hessian bags, blocks of wood, 
Um, I'm going to use cardboard today. I've got a cute little, little bunch of carrots there and I'm not going to be shy because I want lots of carrots, firstly, because <laughs> they're delicious and they're cute little baby carrots. Um, also, they like they like growing together. And it increases your success. I never use all my seeds. I always keep keep seeds and then save seeds as I'm eating as well. All right. Got those there, and just cover them up. Simple little cover them up. Keeping a little blessing as you go. When I'm finding um, rocks and things around, I just put them. I just put them around um, the other the other plants, more of the herbs, because. When you have rocks and things, it accumulates water and creates more life around it. Now I just want to give them a bit of a water before I put the card on. Um, and I don't have, ideally you want a, like a shower head on top here because um, when you have it like this, it can kind of yeah, not be that great. Um, makes it goes all floody instead of separating the water into little drops. So just some cardboard that I had. I'll leave that on there and I might get a couple of um, bigger rocks as I go just to hold that down from the wind. So there's the carrots, the beautiful baby carrots done. Shallots. These are straight shallots. They're really interesting, interesting little seeds. They kind of feel like charcoal. And I've also I, I've done did some sprouts a few days ago, so I've just tucked a few um, mung beans in here as well, which is sprouted just to see what happens. You know, in these interesting times, it's always nice to um, test all the different, all your different ideas, and see how it goes. Because you know, the gardens are abundant, where you get all your greatest blessings. Again, just covering, blessing, beautiful plants. You know, you grow with all the nutrients. Everything that we need has been a healthy, happy family. Okay, on to the leeks. They're the same. Leeks are so delicious. My mum makes incredible casseroles with leeks. And with, with your shallots and your onions and your leeks, when you're harvesting, you don't need to pull, you don't need to pull them all out. You just come along with your knife and you cut it at the bottom and they'll grow again and again and again and again. They just keep growing. So that's good, good to know. And the same if you buy any from the markets or the shops that have the roots on the bottom, you can grow from them. them. So when you're seed saving, at home from the food that you're eating you you can put those things straight into your garden okay so in a few days once these have all sprouted 
It only takes a few days. It's so magical. I will come along with some mulch, which I'm just going to use the grass mulch here and cover the soil. There's a few reasons. Um, this bed doesn't actually get full sun, so it's not a concern of like evaporating. It's more for adding nutrients into the soil. Like this soil is very sandy, so adding that, um, adding the sand will help keep the warmth and the moisture in in the garden. So, what am I putting in now? Bunching onions. These ones are interesting. I am not sure if these are bunching like the shallots, the bunching shallots, or the little brown onions. So all part of life, the beautiful great mystery that we're in together. We will find out when they start to grow. And if there's too many plants in here, as they grow, I can always thin them out. Same over here, I've got some, I sprouted some, some chickpeas the other day for eating. So sprouts are one of the most nutritional things that you can eat. So I love sprouting chickpeas and mung beans. They're easy to keep in storage so you can have a good bulk amount and then you can easily sprout them and have that fresh fresh food whenever you, whenever you need it. So these are beetroot seeds. These seeds are super cute. I'll show you how cute they are. Uh, don't have a high quality enough. They're like little beads. Really surprising. So, I actually started the beetroot line all the way up here. So, I obviously want a lot of beetroot. They are really good for the blood, good for your immune system. Yes, we're going to have some chickpea bushes in here too, hopefully, and mung beans. These are regular in here. So I did have a second line here for beetroots, but I think that that is actually enough. So I will um, put something else in that line. I might put a few, because I still wanted to add in some calendula and I'm going to put the nasturtiums at the end, but I could put in a couple of calendula and chamomile. So I'll do that now. Wow. Chamomile seeds are super tiny, and you don't, I mean, unless you're doing a big big area. You don't need that many chamomile plants. So chamomile is obviously good for the nervous system. I just sprinkled a tiny bit and that would already probably be at least a hundred seeds. A hundred seeds. So um, that will be plenty. And as I said, I can move them around if I establish some more beds. Um, and calendula yeah, so chamomile is good for, you know, you have your tea before bed, help you have beautiful, beautiful sleeps and dreams. And, wow! These calendula seeds, and these are all Eden seeds. Eden seeds are incredible and amazing. Local, you'll have a local seed bank wherever you are in the world. And also you'll have people in your community. These are like, they look like little worms. 
or when I first looked at them I thought like little parts of little baby dragon tails which is appropriate for our garden our uh, magical golden dragon garden this is the same with the calendula I actually don't need that many plants in this garden so I'm just going to plant a few Magical nasturtiums. They're nice big seeds. The nasturtiums. But actually, they're called peppercorns. You can use them as little peppers. Make pickles with them. Um, they're extremely delicious, and they grow off the off the vines of the nasturtium. This nasturtium, you can eat the leaves, the flowers, the seeds, and they grow beautiful big bunches, all different colors. So, and also high in vitamin C, known as Indian Cress. So it's an antiseptic and it repels borers and aphids. And it's a good companion plant, like all of these. I love companion planting in diversity, so it's all about getting a bit of everything. So I'm going to bless two of these seeds and I'm going to plant them. I plant them in the edges because I don't want them in the gardens, taking over the gardens. I want them to fall over the edge and create a beautiful, abundant, pretty pathway. Um, okay, so two of them up there. And then one in here. Four is one of my magic numbers, my main magic number. And the four directions. So it's a good little, good little blessing to complete the garden with. So that's our garden for today. I will give it a really good watering once water is super important for our garden. So what do we have at the front? We've got our welcoming rosemary with our beautiful aloe vera. Then we've got some carrots that are going to sprout up here. Some, uh, this is, these are chives. Then Brahmi, a little strawberry which I'll cut, some snow peas which I'm going to put some sticks in today, tomatoes, got a little loofah in here which will vine down. Loofah is what you clean yourself with in the showers, you can also eat them when they're young. Got some beans, I planted this yesterday and I didn't water it in so you can see how sad they get without their water so I'll do that. Mexican tarragon and in there we have our shallots and our leeks and our beetroots, here's our chives and our Tulsi basil, so beautiful. All these plants will nurture the bee life and the wildlife. And we've got little kale, little kale sprouts here. Akinawa spinach, incredibly uh, good for you. This spinach, you can eat it raw, you can eat it with, cook it however you want. Um, and if I just broke this and put it in the ground there, it would grow a whole nother bush. So, incredibly abundant. You can just keep putting it everywhere in your gardens. Then we've got beetroots, and we'll have some chamomile in here, and some calendula, and we've got some radishes here that I popped in earlier, and our pretty pineapple, and our lavender, and then our nasturtiums. That's our garden that we created today. And then I just wanted to show you some other bits, which show how easy gardening is and eating so this is just using stuff that i have around these are little tubs that i make for my sprouting tubs and i just do a few at a time so i don't end up i don't end up um needing to go into the compost because i don't live with a fridge so i just eat um what i have uh when i have it so this is my super fresh so that's just uh two days after oh no that's one day sprouting so today's the second day and then about two weeks ago and I totally forgot about these and left them um, I just grabbed some soil here to see what it was like and it wasn't from the best spot it wasn't from here this luscious, luscious spot 
and I threw in some pumpkin seeds that I have. Now, now's not the best time for pumpkin seeds. Uh, and I just left them with the lids on over there in a in a box and they've all sprouted. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. So that just shows you how, how much nature wants to grow food for you. And lastly, these are just some little cuttings that I've gotten. Um, so from a lot of plants can just grow from, um, if you grab, for example, this is a lemongrass. So I just grab some lemongrass and I cut it and you can see it's already growing at the top. This is ready just to go straight, straight in the ground. And I also have some geraniums. Geraniums are one of my favorite herbs to make teas. There's like 20 different varieties. This is a rose geranium. There's all, there's coconut geranium, there's lemon geranium, there's all different, all different kinds. They all have different leaves. They're all beautiful. The ones, you make sure that they're a medicinal kind and not, there's a kind that is just for, um, just for the beauty. And then I have here, mother of all herbs. Now this, it's like she will grow into a huge bush and she's just from a little, little stick, little cutting. So you just grab a bit. Chuck it into a jar, just got it in, in a jar there with some water and it grows. Starting doing this so that you can share your plant library and your plant wisdom uh, with all your friends because everybody um, loves plants, especially now because we're connecting back to the medicine ways of nature and growing and creating this abundance together. I'm just waiting for the goannas to come and say hi. They come flying down this cliff. So, I will keep you up to date on how this garden goes and I send you blessings for your garden and I hope it creates beautiful, abundant life for you. Happy day, beauties. So yesterday afternoon I, and today I decided to add some mulch just to help um, hold the earth together as the um, when I was watering it the um, the soil was all running away so and then I've also added the trellises for the beans so I just went and got some sticks that were around the land so that the beans can climb up them Snow peas have already started. Mom, let's make chai. Oh yes, we are. I'm gonna come and show, um, share some wisdom around the garden. What? Share some wisdom with us around the garden. No. Lua's already been in here eating and playing. She loves it. So that's what I would call the finished finished garden design and well another thing that's helpful if you don't have a good watering can is like building up little rock towers which are really cute anyway and then pouring the water onto the rocks and the rock kind of splashes it out yeah this is our beautiful dragon fairy garden May it grow abundantly like all of the gardens that, and all of the seeds that everybody is planting on the earth right now.